All right, let's take a look at finding the inverse of a square root function. Uh, you can see we got f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 2 minus 3. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So remember to, to, take the, to find the inverse, we take the f of x and we change it to y. So I get y equals square root x plus 2 minus 3. And then we swap the x's and y's, and so I get x equals square root y plus 2 minus 3. And then we have to solve for y. All right, so I, I'm going to get this by itself. I need to move the 3 over here. And so I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And that will give me x plus 3 equals square root y plus 2. And then we need to do what? Well, I've got to get rid of that square root, so we're going to need to square both sides. All right. And so that's going to be x plus 3 squared equals y plus 2 and then we'll do what subtract 2 to both sides and so that's going to leave us with x plus 3 squared minus 2 equals y so that's going to give me f inverse Okay, remember, after you solve for y, you change the y to the f inverse symbol. That equals x plus 3 squared minus 2. All right, so hopefully you see a problem with this. If we look at this graph we have a vertex of negative 3 negative 2 so negative 3 negative 2 that would be somewhere down here I don't care about where it is exactly and then this is a parabola that opens upward well do you remember do you remember the horizontal line test if you draw a horizontal line through a graph and it intersects the graph in more than one spot, and you can see here it intersects it in two places, that means it's not one-to-one, -one, so it doesn't have an inverse. Okay? But look at this. If I erase that part of the graph, it's now one-to-one. -one. So what have I done? Well, I said, okay, I'm only going to use x values from this point back this way. Okay? I'm restricting the domain of the function, of this function here. And that makes it one-to-one. -one. All right, so I've got to put a restriction on the domain of this function here. Well, what does it need to be? Well, if you have a function f of x, here's our function f of x, the range of our original function the range of this is the domain of the inverse. Okay, so let me, let me write that out. The range of f, of our function up here, is the domain of our inverse function okay so let's figure out what the range is here well if you look at this we've got the square root of something minus 3 well remember whenever you take the square root of something you're either going to get 0 or a positive number all right so if I take the zero or positive number that I'm going to get from, from this part of the problem, that's going to be zero or positive. Okay, So let's look. I've got negative 3, 
right? See the minus 3 plus 0 or a positive number. Well, that means the range, the range for this is going to be what? negative 3, see the negative 3, and then I'm adding 0 or a positive number, so that means it'll go to infinity. So that's the range of this function. So this right here, this right here, has to be the domain of our inverse. And so that means we would add 4x. Okay, so x has to be greater than or equal to negative 3. And so there's your answer. All right, so I hope this helped. Check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.